setting up an OpenVPN site-to-site -site VPN, configuring the server. In this video, we set up an OpenVPN site-to-site -site VPN, and we're going to configure the server. Today, we got Pat from Performance IT. He's joining us, and he's going to set up the server over on his firewall remotely. Hey, Pat. Hey, Jared. So you're going to run through this. I don't have a lot to do in this video, so go ahead and, and start. We'll jump over to your screen. All right. So here I have a base install of PFSense. Uh, the only thing that I've done so far is I just modified my dashboard. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to System, and we're going to set up a user. We're going to go Add User, and we'll do Jared. And we'll give them a strong password. I use uh, password123. Is that a good password? <laughs> <laughs> Not use, quite. Strong, use strong passwords. Jared. And down here, we can see group membership, not a member of admin. And then we just click save. Next thing we want to do is we want to come over to the package manager and we want to come over to available packages, search for VPN, and search. We want to install OpenVPN client export. This will allow us, once we've configured the server, to export the key needed for each site to be able to import the key and connect to the VPN. All right, now that that's done, we're going to come over to the VPN, open VPN, and to make things easier, we're going to use the wizard. We're going to use the local user access. I like wizards. Wizards are magical. And in software, it is kind of magical because it does an awful lot for you where you don't have to do it and slog through all the hard details, right? Yes. So we're going to go next. We're going to add a new CA and we'll do performance IT underscore CA and we'll fill in our information. So you need to put your country code, your state, location, and organization. Click Add New. All right. And now we need to create a certificate. Come into Add New. IT underscore cert. No, I think it was CA underscore CA. That was. Oh, that's a descriptive name. Okay. Yep. And we use the same information that we used for creating the CA. Create new. All right, and now we're into the VPN configuration. So the first thing we want to do is come to the local port. Currently, I also have another server running at 1194, so we're going to be changing this to 1199. And you want to create a descriptive name for your VPN server. So we will use site to site smart home for this example and next TLS authentication and we will let the server generate this key for us and then our encryption we want to set to 256 CVC by default it is 128 which is plenty secure next is the tunnel network the tunnel network will be the IP of the VPN network itself. You do not want to set this to the local IP of your network. This will be a separate network only for the VPN tunnel. So in this example, we'll use 192.168.110.0. And that should be a unique IP address from either the client side or the server side, correct? Correct. Yeah. Next is we will leave the redirect gateway traffic unchecked. If you wanted to route all the client traffic through the VPN, you would turn this on. And next will be 
all the local networks that you want the client to have access to. Uh, we only have one network that we'll be sending over, so 192.168.111.0/24. If you were going to have multiple networks, you would just separate them with commas. And next will be the DNS server. We want to set this in case you route any traffic outside of the local network over the VPN. We just got some typical defaults that you're using, but yep. so there certainly can be other things. That Cloudflare and Google's DNS servers. And next. And we want to leave the default of check on the firewall rules and the traffic rules. And we finish. After that, we want to come over to client export. So at this point, that server's up and running? Yes. Nothing else you have to do after you're done with that wizard. But to have the server side anyways, to have it up and running. The server is up and running. Oh, that's excellent. And now it's just exporting the client key so that the client may access the network. So we come over to client export, we select the network that we want, and we scroll down. Oh, sorry, I missed one step. We need to come over to OpenVPN again, and we need to edit the, and we need to switch over to remote user off and save. See, I was right. There was another step. <laughs> <laughs> I think I threw you off there with that one. Yeah. So then it's client export. And we come down to here. And we have our certificate files. Um, for this case, we'll be just downloading the generic file and save. And I will send this over to Jared so that he can now load it on his PFSense as a client. And we'll test the connection. All right, I'm going to get that file from Pat and we're going to set up the SG1100 and we'll show that we'll come right back here in a minute and show that we can establish a connection between the client and the server. All right, that, that didn't take too long. And actually, we made a video for uh, setting up the OpenVPN site-to-site -site client. So you can check that out. We'll leave a link below, or maybe I can figure out how to put a card up here. We'll see. Anyways, uh, we're back. And so now we're just going to plug in the WAN port of the SG1100, and we'll see if we can get uh, connection. Give that a second. All right, we're looking at... Um, Pat's server again, and we see that OpenVPN section right there. We might need to give it a minute to get online. We'll refresh it maybe. All right, and there you go. We've established a connection, and you can check out our other video where we configured the client and we actually route the traffic through the VPN. If you found this video interesting, consider giving us a thumbs up or subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. If you'd like help with any of these configurations or any network or audio video help, you can reach us at our contact information below. Thank you.